to what you said. You said emotionally the Giants were really on track for today. We felt that in the meetings. We felt they were much more emotional than the Eagles, but all fans, Eagle fans, Giant fans, emotion only carries you a quarter. Now you have to go play. The emotion is over. Everybody's into the game. Now the Giants are on even par emotionally. Now you got to go play with talent and execution. Second down and ten. The ninth carry on this drive of now 12 plays by Rodney Hampton. He's down to the 19-yard line, and Ronnie Dixon got the first hit on him as he ran right up the gut. And you saw the same thing that you saw at Waters. Could he have fumbled on that play? Absolutely, because he will not surrender. He will not go down. And don't get mad at good backs that fumble because they fight for more yards, and that's exactly what he was doing. Well, he's fumbled four times this year, which is somewhat of a surprise because he had gone over 600 carries here entering the season without a fumble. I think part of that, too, remember he had a cast there for a while, had that bad wrist for a while. Keith Elias is in the game. Third and seven and on this drive. Dave Brown has gone two of two on third down conversions. And going for Lewis again. The coverage by Bobby Taylor in the pass. Whistles incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Bobby Taylor. He's taller than most corners. He's a rookie. Rookies aren't supposed to play this good. Watch him. Full press bumping one. He's, he's running off. He's looking at the quarterback. He feels. Watch him drive the route. Watch his height. He extends. Here's a guy that's as good as any rookie. The Panthers uh, have one, you know, the, the two best rookies. Tyrone Poole. Tyrone Poole and this guy are the two best rookies we've seen at corners in the last four or five years. That Yilawaiso has had some great success where he is right now. This will be a 37-yard attempt on the man it's hold. Oh, he missed. And he misses. Missed. He had gone 19 consecutive field goals inside the 40. Gino's Cheesesteaks here in Philadelphia. Boy, they look good on a cold day like we're having today. Well, the Giants just missed the 37-yard field goal. Philadelphia takes over. First down and 10 yards to go. At the 28-yard line. Rodney Duke going right to work on first down. Swings it out to Ricky Waters. Nice defense brought down by Thomas Randolph. We're going to show you the field goal. Watch the crowd. It's the Philadelphia Eagle crowd. They have an arrow behind the goalpost. If you can take it up, stop it right there. They got it going that way. What they do is they turn the arrow around. They get it that way, and they drive. The whole crowd drives the ball. Why? Look at them. Drive the ball out of there. That's the guy. That's the mailman we talked. That's Bill the mailman holding on to that arrow. Second down and nine. But it heads up the middle with Jesse Armstead, and there's the arrow group. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the power of the point right there. Go wide, go wide. You know the last time DeLuiso missed a field goal from that distance? No. In Atlanta, and you were coaching him, and what'd you do after he missed? I cut him right <laughs> after the ball game. In fact, the reason I cut him, the ball didn't go through, but the turf did. He hit a divot that went through. <laughs> Doesn't miss many. Third down and nine. They got Garner at the top of your screen as a wide receiver, and Rodney Pete will burn a timeout. We're in the second quarter. It's 14 to seven, Philadelphia. You'll be home. You'll be in Green Bay. You'll be in Green Bay. Don't miss that Tuesday movie. Veteran Stadium sold, filled the capacity today for this great rivalry between the Giants and the Eagles. Third down and nine, and Pete has four receivers deployed. Pete, pretty good time. They gotta get out to the 37. A fumble by Carpenter after the catch. Out of bounds it goes, and a first down for Philadelphia. Gain of 12 on the play, and the pass by Rodney Pete. And his crossing routes coming from the other side of the formation. Now, can you fumble this forward for the first? There's the ball out. If you made the tackle, it is not a first down. Jason Seahorn knocked it away, 31, and then oh. there was Vincey Glenn. Look how smart Vincey was trying to stay in bounds and recover. That's a vet. No, no, no. Now, they got to back the ball up. You cannot advance the ball fumbling forward. The ball has to go back to where he lost possession of the ball, and that may keep him from having a first down. The ball will be placed at the spot of the fumble. You called it. And there's an official. I think 
If I ever went back to coaching, I wouldn't holler at him much. Just a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Eagles have got a punt for a first time today. They've fumbled, had a touchdown pass, a touchdown run. And now here is Tom Hutton, who is fifth in the NFL, as you see, at over 44 yards a punt. Deep back 86 is Arthur Marshall. He positions himself back at about the 20-yard line. 14-7, there's a flag thrown on the punt. And a beauty it is, he rockets it downfield. And it takes a great Eagles bounce, and it's down inside the five by Philadelphia's Mark Woodard. But a flag was thrown on the play. What a punt. That thing sat right where he wanted it to. And it sailed 60 yards. Wow. Punter like that will keep you in a tight ball game. And he's a rookie. Isn't that unbelievable? I hate rookies. That's one guy I'd have to take home to dinner. Now, interestingly enough, in Chicago today, the second-round pick, Todd Sauerbrunn, has been seated on the bench by Dave Weinstadt, and they brought in Pat O'Neill to Illegal formation, offense. The left tackle lined up in the backfield. Will re-kick. And this Hutton is a rookie free agent out of Tennessee. And, the, and of course, the Chicago Bear guy is a second-round pick, and you give him all that money, and it counts in your salary cap. And that's why you don't draft punters or kickers. You just get these type of guys. The left tackle, they got to be they, they got to be talking about that guy, but I don't see it. I don't see it right here with this shot. Do you? I don't see it. You're asking me? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> that's what I get. I went and bragged down those officials, and now they found something that wasn't there. I didn't see that one. There's a special teams coach. He got he used to be at Georgia Tech, and you can tell that because he's got four chews in his chin there. Danny Smith. Danny Smith, the old Georgia Tech coach. Arthur Marshall. There's another flag and another great punt. Not quite as far. Marshall from the 18-yard line. Got a nice block. But it didn't produce much at all as he's out to the 20-yard line. A return of four yards on a punt of 52. And as we said, another marker thrown by Johnny Greer's crew. The tackle there was made by Sylvester Wright. And the return man was jumping and... That's, a, that's against the Eagles. Second Eagle penalty on those special teams. And Danny, Danny Smith is going to make a substitution. Yeah, he's benching. He's benching somebody. Don't swallow your chew, Danny. That can kill a good coach. They're going to bring in Chris T. Jones, a wide receiver. <laughs> Illegal formation. Offense. Number 88 lined up in the backfield. Will re-kick. 88 is Jimmy Johnson, and he'll be yanked. They're going to put in Chris T. Jones, a rookie wide receiver out of Miami. You all remember all Jimmy. Join Jimmy Jones. You remember Jimmy Johnson? John, he used to, uh, didn't he coach the Cowboys? <laughs> is that the same one? Close. Close. Now he's on the best pregame show in all of football. You watch Fox's pregame show. Don't bother looking at those other ones. I've seen them. They're terrible. Fox with Jimmy Johnson's pregame show. That's where it's at. So the third consecutive punt now by Hutton. Snap as he gets it on a hop. And this will be the shortest of the three as Thomas Lewis was deep back, and that bounces out of bounds at the 32 yard line. So they had him down at the four, then they had him down at the 20, and the Giants really benefit as they will get the ball at the 31. Well, here's today's athletic trivia question How many times have the Giants and the Eagles met in the playoffs? The answer is coming up. Once again, today's AFLAC trivia question. How many times have the Giants and the Eagles met in the playoffs? Only once, back in December of 81, when the Giants upset the Eagles. 27-21 in the NFC Wild Card game, right here at Veterans Stadium. And Mark Haynes, with an end zone recovery of this fumbled kickoff, was the key play in the game. 27-21, the Giants upset Philadelphia. Giants looking to upset Philadelphia today. It's 14-7. Eagles lead. We're about a 12 minutes remaining on the first half. Brown is thrown, a touchdown, and thrown an interception. And the pitch out to the rookie Tyrone Wheatley out of Michigan, and he slithers to the 36 and picks up four. Right now, let's go for this McDonald's game break, and let's go live to Hollywood and James Brown. Kevin, in a battle for the top spot in the NFC West, Atlanta likes the Jeff George to Terrence Mathis combination. This is the second hookup, capping a 91-yard drive. Atlanta on top, 14-0, and tell Jerry that Jimmy Johnson is in his seat. <laughs> Jimmy, I thought you were here playing. <laughs> You'd love a game like this, wouldn't you? The NFC East. Oh, yeah. 
Second down and six. Nice take by Brown, but he can't find a receiver and gets the block, and a flag is thrown as Brown weaves his way to the 39, and flag is back at the 34. Now, Coach Reeves says he was going to play Wheatley holding on the Giants, and he was going to get him in. And when Wheatley goes in there, the toss sweep becomes a play. You don't have to uh, have the eyes. You don't have to have vision to cut, and he has ability, so they toss sweep it with him. Holding, 78, offense, still second down. 78 is Greg Bishop, the left guard, as you see the penalties, and the Giants pretty much right in the middle of the pack in the NFL. Here is the left guard, 78. Let's see what he does. Has the block in there, has his... Oh, that's, that's picky unish. What? What? <laughs> that's, that's being too technical. Keith Elias in the backfield, second down and 16 for the Giants. Push back to their 26 with the penalty. Dave Brown, Keith Elias, and brought down immediately by Andy Harmon at the 24-yard line. Andy Harmon just signed a big contract a couple weeks ago, which made him one of the top-paid defensive tackles in the NFL. And that's surprising that Andy's there. Andy's an upfield pass rush guy. Why he's on the line of scrimmage, it may, maybe all that money, the, the wallet's so heavy he couldn't get going. <laughs> the, he's usually all the way back in there. That's not the guy you expect to be uh, laying back for a screen. What an all-out effort guy, a guy that spills his guts, but he likes to get upfield and not play at the line of scrimmage. Third and 17 now. Waves in there along with Elias from the 25 yard line. Dave Brown, pretty good time, moving up. Here's a pass picked off by William Thomas. William Thomas cuts back inside, inside the 15 into the giant 12 yard line. He picked off giant quarterbacks twice back in October. That time he returns a pick 29 yards. And a giant player is down. That's the center, Brian Williams. Well, we talked about William Thomas before the whole game got going. He's why they're winning. He, they're going to come down and throw a dig. This linebacker is going to back up. The quarterback should never, never, never throw this football. At no time, watch him, at no time is he open. At no time, I think the quarterback, I think the Giants are frustrated. They want points. They got to go, but you don't get them by force feeding the baby. And here's a quarterback, Jerry, who had gone 18 consecutive quarters without throwing an interception. Look at that. That is at no time. If he didn't intercept it, Zorich was going to intercept it. And if Zorich didn't intercept it, Bobby, or somebody was going to get it. And then Dave Brown. And I'm a Brown fan, and I think Brown has the equipment to become a star in this league. But that was a mistake. And here's a guy who is blossoming in this, his fourth NFL season, fifth NFL season. He now has, Jerry, for the season, William Thomas, five interceptions. And we said before the game started, this is why they're winning. They're winning with the defense, but they're winning with this linebacker, William Thomas. He's making it all happen. Injury timeout. Let's get it on a Giants interception. Watch Brian Williams, the center, fighting to make the tackle. He gets a hold of the linebacker, and he lands right there on his right knee. And that's a lot of big men can't fly through the air and just land on the knee without hurting something. That, that's, a, that's too big of a guy. He walked off under his own power. He should return the center, Brian Williams. Right now, it's Philadelphia. First down and 10 yards to go at the Giant 12. And Ricky Waters to the 10. Stacked up by Michael Brooks, the middle linebacker. The key, the key for the Eagles offense is not only Ricky Waters, it's Guy McIntyre, the left guard. He's their best football player. Follow me, Ricky. Come on, here we go. And he turns it up inside. He should have followed. Had bad eyes that time. He, along with Riley McKenzie on that line, what did uh, Ray Rhodes say earlier this week, have been the foundation of this team all season. He's got room to roll, and he's inside the five and fumbles the ball, and it's picked up by the Giants and Bensie Glenn. Second Philadelphia turnover. And when I saw him running and break loose, I was thinking up here, you better slide because the Giants were coming from all sides. They were gonna, they had him in a vice, they had him cone, 
And I was thinking, you better slide. Here he goes. They're coming from the right side. They're coming from the left side. Look where the ball is. There, they 